Welcome to the Create a Life You Love podcast, the go-to podcast for people who are called to make a positive impact through the power of coaching. You'll hear encouraging stories from coaches sharing their journeys and their lessons learned along the way, tips from top experts who help coaches thrive in their life and their business, and so much more. So if you're ready to create a business and a life of impact that you love, let's get started. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today on today's episode of the Create a Life You Love podcast. I'm Chantal Cox. I'm an author, speaker, transformation, neuro coach, and certified life purpose coach who saves purpose-driven coaches from feeling stuck and frustrated so that you can get off the hamster wheel and make the aligned impact that you are destined for without overwhelm and burnout. And I'm Gwen White, a quantum human design specialist and virtual coach. I work with powerful, creative, highly sensitive, introverted women and entrepreneurs who hire me to discover their clarity and passion so that they can live lives of purpose and prosperity. And before we dive in with our amazing guest, Genesis, I want to give a short shout out to our sponsor, the Create a Life You Love membership, which is a growing community of passionate purpose-driven coaches who are up-leveling in the most powerful ways to increase their knowledge, momentum, and impact. We'd love for you to join us. So for more information and to apply, check out createalifeyoulovecoaching.com forward slash membership today. Awesome. And this is just being streamed live to Facebook at the moment. But if you are watching, please be sure to um, share any comments and questions and we will get to them as it makes flow in the sense of uh, to make sense in the flow of our conversation. <laughs> All right. We're super excited to be here today with Genesis Amaris Kemp. She's a visionary life coach motivational speaker, author, and podcaster extraordinaire. She is a trailblazer who wants others to live out their dreams, goals, and visions. And we've all been given an excellent purpose in life. It is up to us to walk it out and live victoriously. So welcome, Genesis. We're so glad to have you on the show. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you so much for having me, Chantel and Gwen. Yes. And to have you. 100%. And where are you joining us from today? All the way from Houston, Texas. Nice. <laughs> um, I am actually from Texas as well, born and raised, um, although I'm now based in New Mexico. So I definitely understand the Texas culture. Um, but shifting gears a bit, um, Genesis, I'm really fascinated with how you've grown and scaled your business without necessarily niching. Um, and I'm hoping we can get into that. But first, I would love for you to share um, how you came to your journey of creating a life you love through speaking, writing, podcasting. And you can also, if you can, share with us who it is you serve and how you got started. So how I came up upon this journey that I'm on is mere accidental so my background is actually corporate America. So I spent 15 years as a whole in corporate and 12 of those years were in the oil and gas and energy sector. So very male dominated, male driven, and not a lot of people that necessarily look like me unless we're crossing ties with international waters or other corporations. So I started working at a small mom and pop company, which my assets were corrosion and then I built up so I started as an imaging clerk and worked my way all the way up to HSC which is health safety and environmental and became a manager then I was already capped out in my salary band so I was like what is it that I want to do so I can continue to not just survive but thrive in my industry so I started reaching out to fortune 500 companies I had three job offers and I went with the one with the lowest pay, which some of you may be like, oh, shocker. And the reason why I did that is one, I prayed about it with my parents and my pastor at the time. And then two, it was branded by association. So this particular company, anywhere you go worldwide, people knew this company and I'm not gonna disclose the name for various reasons. So I said, okay, there's sustainability, there's longevity, there's brand association, and et cetera. And as long as I get my foot in the door, I can maneuver the rest of the way, right? So whenever I went in for the interviews, everything went well. And they came back with an offer as an administrative assistant. And I'm like, 
wait, 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 wait. That doesn't make sense. I just told you I knew all about your assets offshore because little did they know I was on the other side working those. So not to be long-winded here. So fast forwarding, I took the offer, started off at a certain salary, and then I went to school at the, at the time. I went to night classes and worked, worked full-time during the day, found a loophole, and found out that the company would actually pay for my education. So I ended ended up changing my degree from a psychology major to supply chain and logistics and technology and graduated with double minors in purchasing and OLS, which is organizational leadership and supervision at a tier one university, the University of Houston, go Coots. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it was a journey. And so now whenever people ask me, what made you get into podcasting? What made you write a book? I would say, number one, podcasting was mere accident. I got into it after losing my father in November of 2020 to medical negligence. So pure grief. I got tired of hearing people say, I know how you feel. Oh, I'm so sorry. He's in a better place when in actuality, some of these people still have both living parents. So you don't know how I feel. Then he's in a better place. Yes, that was soothing in a sense. But that wasn't soothing for me based on the relationship that I had with my father. I was a hands down daddy's girl. And so I was like, the only way for me to help myself get over this grief is to talk into the mic and talk about my feelings, my emotional, that's real to me that no one can tell me how I should feel given this circumstance. Then the book Chocolate Drop in Corporate America from the pit to the palace came about after facing racism in a work setting bullying, which I already went through a stint of bullying early on in my life in high school. So I already knew what the tactics are and the play. It was just a different ball game whenever you're dealing with it in corporate America, right? Right. And I had no idea, Chantel and Gwen, that I was going to write a book. I just wrote down the words chocolate drop in corporate America because I was like, huh, I'm chocolate and I can't say Hershey's because I don't want to be sued by the Hershey company. And I was like, and I work in corporate <laughs> America. But the book cover shows so much more than it just being about me. It shows all of us coming together and how no matter what industry you, you're in, no matter what your background is, your nationality or whatever, we have all faced some form of oppression, whether it was bullying, whether it was sexism, nepotism, favoritism, or whatever the case may be. And whenever you begin to look at that at a holistic level, you start to see that it's not just about your race or all these other forms of things that are put against us to divide us. It's bigger than that. And it's beyond the surface level. So that's what the book looks like, the book cover. Okay. So cool. Oh, very nice. And the people that I serve now is anyone who has been slighted on the job in any way. Anyone who has ever felt like they weren't good enough, whether they listened to limiting beliefs, they had imposter syndrome, they had doubt, or maybe they were beaten down by the world system because they were so busy trying to seek validation from people who were never meant to truly appease them. People who were never really meant to link arms with them. People who were in your corner for only what you can do for them. But once you checked off that box, they were no longer there to see you and to hear you. So I tell people I am that mindset hacker because it starts with your mind, you knowing who you are and whose you are. And I'm that firecracker because so many times people are like, oh, you talk too much. Well, now people are paying me to talk. People are, are having me on podcasts, like you lovely ladies. I have my own podcast and et cetera. So it's like every time somebody tries to strip you down, you think about the strengths and the skills you have and think about how you can use those strengths and skills to pour back into the world, not just for yourself, but other people who are coming alongside you behind you and future generations to come and that's what it's about laying a foundation it's about serving hmm. beautiful that's um, amazing that will definitely is. one of our promo clips next week <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was immediately thinking about my um decades of time in corporate america and yeah um, definitely feeling a lot of the same sort of vibe from, yeah, 
the industry or industries that I worked in. Um, I never spent time in the industry or energy industry, but I certainly have close ties to that industry. Um, and um, yeah, it's a very common tale. Um, I spent a majority majority of my time here in New Mexico, and it's a very diverse populace, and yet it's still, you know, when you go into the corporate world here, it's still very male-dominated. It's still very um, Anglo-dominated. And so, yeah, um, a lot of the things that you're describing are absolutely, yeah, shared experiences. Really amazing. Um, Thank you for sharing. Sh- for sharing that, Gwen, because I want women, no matter where you are, or if you have a leadership role, or I want you to feel like you can lead from any seat without feeling that you're not good enough, or without feeling that is it me or is it them, but knowing what you bring to the table and really taking ownership of that. So you could truly flourish in your career, whether you choose to be a E an employee or whether you choose to be another E, an entrepreneur or whatever, you can be whatever your heart desires once you really tap into knowing who you are, your why, and how you're going to project that outward. Amen. Love it. I love that. Well, you talked a lot about some kind of synchronicities that got you started on your journey. Um, did you kind of start out with an initial vision? And if so, how has that evolved for you since you got going? Yeah, so my initial vision was to put out content that was educational, inspirational, and motivational without placating it or without putting on a mask or putting on a facade because anyone who knows me knows I am that chick where I could hang out in sweatpants all day throw on a t-shirt and I will be good but when it's time to dress up and go look presentable I could be that chick too but I'm not going to plaster my face with makeup or I'm not going to look a certain way that you want me to look because it validates a box that you want to place me in And so I said, if I could do that and put it in a content form where people could be like, yes, oh my gosh, that's what I needed. No filters, no no prim and proper stuff. Just get down to the nitty and gritty. And I was like, well, I could take that part of me and pair it with creativity and really give people what they're looking for. Because how many times have we had those faux pas and those word vomits? And once it came out, you can't clean it up. You can't delete it because it's a live conversation. You can't back it up or whatnot. You can't hit that control alt delete so why are we trying to do that with every aspect of our lives why are we using all these filters to hide certain imperfections and etc have we ever thought that maybe it's the imperfections that set us apart that give us our uniqueness and give us our authenticity let's think about that because if you look at everything out here now, everyone is vying for this social media validation. People are vying to be seen and heard. People are vying to be liked. But how much is that likeness causing you to suffer? And so I was like, my vision as a visionary life coach was to envision who you are internally, because once you go within, then you're going to be able to manifest that outwardly and people are going to see you for the real you. Yes. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. That. You're just speaking my language. <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Really incredible. I love it. Yeah. So you've already shared so much, but really... Um, so hopefully it's all, you know, fresh on your mind since you're reliving a lot of it right now. And so reflecting back over your journey so far, what do you feel like has been one of the most valuable lessons that you've learned? One of the most valuable lessons that I've learned reflecting on my career in corporate America was not allowing the no's to divine me and redefining no as next opportunity or new opening or 
not often because whenever you start to take no and you start to break it apart and you flip the script on no, then you begin to see that the possibilities are endless because you're not allowing that no to condition you. Yes, it may be a no right now, but it's not always going to be a no. It may be a no to that person, but that person does not have the final say. It may be a no um, maybe an hour ago, but if you go next door and you pitch to another com uh, competitor, it could be a yes because they're like, yes, she has what I need. She has what it takes or whatnot. But if we allow ourselves to wallow in the no and remain stuck and stagnant, we're never going to pop out. And I like to say, I like to pop prepared on purpose because it was some of the no's in my life that allowed me to drive myself further. And yes, the no's, they hurt. Yes, the rejection hurts. But now just see the rejection as a redirection or the rejection as a protection because maybe that wasn't for you. That wasn't your season for you to be in. So that's one thing that I've learned looking back now, hindsight 2020. Another thing is taking charge of your career. You can't always wait for someone hey, Genesis, I have this great opportunity for you, girl. No, because they're not always going to do that. And you may not necessarily be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. So how can you take the skills that you have? How can you see yourself as an asset? And how can you remix it to show up to other people and show them, this is what I can provide for you. This is how I could be the solution to your problem. This is how we can partner and go further and faster together whenever we collaborate. This is how I show up and this is how you show up and this is how we can help each other. Because if we get outside of the with a method, what's in it for me and change the me for a we, then we start to see how synergies can take place. And we start to see how, you know, those seeds that we planted back then can turn into a beautiful harvest. Because think about it this way, ladies, can a farmer truly reap if the farmer never sows? Mm. Mm -hmm. Good point. And I have to say, I love no next opportunity. I'm going to borrow that. <laughs> yeah. So, so many, brilliant. <laughs> so many good things there. I definitely have to go back and take notes on your different uh, explanations of NO and your pop mm -hmm. and just everything. Just great, great little nuggets here. So, um, a big reason why I reached out and asked if you would come be a guest on my humble little podcast is because you are so much further ahead on your podcasting journey than I am. I know you have over 700 episodes and I know when we would share in the mastermind, you had like a, a rating system that you would share. So tell us about your podcast and uh, what advice would you give to a new podcaster? Sure. So my podcast is called Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. The gems does not have a significant meaning behind it. I just think about gems as a diamond and precious jewelry, precious nuggets that you could share. And I truly believe that each one of us has incredible gems that has been bestowed to us and inside of us that the world needs. So that's why it's gems. And I started around four pillars versus niching down because I kept hearing so many people from different communities that I'm a part of say, hey, you should niche Genesis, you should do this or whatnot. And I said, no, because then I begin to sound like the C of everyone else, even though I have a different tone, um, diction or whatever. I said, the reason why I have four pillars is because I want topics that are educational, inspirational and motivational while also pairing it with my love and passion of D, E, I, and B, which is diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging. And the reason why I, I thought about that is because I'm first generation American. My mother is West Indian, so she's Caribbean des descent. And my father was from Curacao, so right off the tip of Venezuela. Also, part, um, some people know it as the ABC's islands. So Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. And I said, you know what? I come from a multicultural family. There's people in my family who are from different descendants. And that's a part of my family. That's a part of me. And that's how I want to show up to the world. And that's why DEI and B is not a check the box for me. It's actually my life. Um, so that's one, one way that I 
had that idea around the podcast. And even though I started from humble beginnings and just talking into the mic in the height of the pandemic, it was to give other people hope that, you know, even though you're grieving, whether you lost a family member, a friend, a pet, your job or whatnot, you don't have to allow that grief to keep you in a pattern where you lose hope and you lose focus of yourself because the hurt is too much. The hurt is intensified. The hurt makes you feel like, what's the point of living? Because as long as you're breathing and you wake up to see another day, I tell people that it's better to be six feet above the ground versus six feet in the ground because there's always someone wishing that they had what we had, that they could see, that they that they could talk, they could walk, they could, you know, whatever. Sometimes we take life for granted until we're laying up in a hospital bed or the doctor's office waiting to see how are we going to beat this dot, dot, dot. When in actuality, if we just start grabbing hold of things and making it work for us, then we start to see how our tribe, the people who really are a part of our community, the people who support us genuinely will start to gravitate. So I tell people, you don't have to have everything right to start, just start. I didn't have, you know, a podcast mic when I started. I started with my cell phone, hashtag Android user. Um, I started with my MacBook. Once I began to work out some of the kinks and I started with anchor.fm. Why? Because it was free. And I said, you know what? I don't want to invest X amount of dollars if I don't think this podcast is going to boom. But I knew deep down inside of me that it was going to take off and I had to tune out the noise because I can't believe tell you, like some of my family's like, oh, you have a degree. Uh, you uh, You have this work experience. Why are you doing this podcast? It's not paying you. You need to go back to work. You're wasting your time. My husband told me, my brothers told me, there were so many freaking Franken people in my life that did not believe in me in my podcast, but I kept on going because I needed to bet on myself. And not only did my show go from the bottom, it went from no ratings to the top 25% to the top 10%. So now it's currently ranked in the top 2% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts. And did I see a lot of money coming in from it? No. But do I see the magnitude and the impact that I'm making by the audience members that's listening in and the value that they're getting from amazing speakers that have came into the community? Yes. And if I could touch one life, then I've done my job because you don't know who that person is going to go on to touch and bless. And we start to see the domino and the ripple effect. And now, now that I have over 700 episodes, along the way, I began to curate things that work for me. I started a podcast guest form, so I'm not going here, there, and everywhere else pulling together guest information. I started putting certain metrics in place and letting people know, okay, this is the value that you're going to get by being on my show, because it shouldn't just be one side, it's both sides. How are we both going to grow by doing this collaboration together? I started telling people, respect my time just as much as I respect your time, because I'm not getting paid to do it. I'm doing it because I love to do it. And I'm doing it because I want to share your brand, or I want to share your mission. So the last thing that you could do, no, not the last thing, The least thing you could do is put some respect on my time because we all have heard time is money. So Mm -hmm. if you know that you're not going to show up, let me know. I understand that life happens. I understand that there's break-ins in our schedules, but by you failing to let me know, you're pretty much ghosting me. And then you want to come back and be a guest? No, because you didn't uphold certain integrities and standards the first time. So then I implemented a $25 no-show fee. Yes, a lot of people charged me up about it. They gave me flack. But I was like, when you go to your doctor's office, if you don't show up, there's a sign that you pay a cancellation fee or a no-show fee. If you don't do X, Y, and Z over here, that service provider is charging a fee. So why can't I charge a fee? And $25 is nothing compared to what I've seen other people charge, $40, $100 or whatnot. And I said, everyone is in a different socioeconomic status. So $25 is something reasonable because nowadays when you go out to eat, it's $25 and up for a meal. So if you, you pay for what you want in life, you know? Yeah. So absolutely. a few questions on that because, uh, 
our membership members, they all are in some um, phase of their journey of starting their own podcast. And so we're doing a podcast masterclass and like, we're kind of going all in on podcasting, which is why I was like, oh, we got to get Genesis on the podcast. Um, but so when you do charge that $25, do you charge it after they no show or do you collect it before and then give it back? Or how does that work? So on my form, I use drop form. So it's charged up front, but there is a way that you could uh, move around the system without paying it. And then whenever they do show up, I'll refund it. But then after the fact, I was, I was doing it where if they didn't show up, I would send an invoice, but some people are people, let's be real. And they wouldn't pay the $25 prime example. I had a guy that did not show up. I sent him the invoice or whatnot, and he failed to pay it. And he responded back, well, I would love to get back on your calendar and do it. And I said, um, well, obviously you didn't pay attention that there was a disclaimer on my form and it says a failure to show or communicate in advance will result in a $25 no-show fee. And until we could reprimand this, then you will not be coming back on the show because if you didn't show up the first time, who's to say that you're gonna, who's to say you will or will not do it another time? And me being a mother of a young infant, a three month old, that's taking time away from my my child that I could spend, it's taking time away from my business. And quite frankly, it's very disrespectful in my opinion. People yes. show up for what they want when they want. Exactly, yeah. yeah. If it's a priority, they make it happen. And mm -hmm. yeah, to no show a podcast. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's only 30 Pretty minutes. Disrespect. Exactly. It's exactly. It's not like, you know, a job interview or, you know, 90 minutes of, yeah, chat time. It's, it's a podcast, for goodness sakes. You wanted to be on, you signed up to join as a guest. Oh to not show up is just insane. So I think it's completely reasonable that you, yeah, you have that no-show policy and that you charge a fee. Yeah, really great advice for new podcasters, for sure. Really interesting. Um, I love the title, the name of your podcast, Gems. It reminds me, I'm a human design um, specialist and um, practitioner and I immediately think um, of the human design body graph. It's made up of all of these shapes. And I have um, a human design teacher who calls them gems. And so I thought, oh, how cool. <laughs> so I I'm, I'm, oh, was wondering if it did stand for something in particular. Um, it's beautiful. Um, and I want to talk a little bit more about your being a parent but I also want to touch on your book a little bit. Um, one thing that really intrigued me was how you came up with the three R's, the refuel, refocus, and realign and what they mean. Yeah, so refuel to me was doing something that was building me back up. And the way I like to articulate it, because I love cars and fast cars, I wish I could have one right now. So it's like, if you don't fill up your gas tank, your car is not going to run. And now we're in EVs, electric vehicles. If you don't charge your vehicle, your vehicle is not going to run. So if you can focus your time and energy on your vehicle, why not focus your time and energy on your human vehicle, which is your body? Your body is your temple. So in order to have optimal longevity, sustainable life, you need to refuel yourself. So what is going to build you back up, especially after you've been depleted, pouring out into others and pouring out to in various things. Mm -hmm. So if you don't take time to refuel yourself, you're not going to go far or you're not going to go as far as you expect it. So that's the refuel part. Refocus begins to peel back the onion layer here. What are you focused on? And is your focus driving you in the direction that you want to go? Or is your focus pulling you in somebody else's lane and you're being pulled in that lane, not paying attention to what's out in front of you that you're gonna, ah, boom, a crash because you're so busy looking over there to the left and over there to the right instead of looking out 
at what's in what's out in front of you. And if you think about the car analogy here, we have these huge windshields, but a small rear view mirror. And it's because your past is small and minute. Your past does not necessarily determine your future. You can learn from your past, learn what mistakes not to repeat, learn how you can reinvent the wheel and learn how you could go further. But your windshield is bigger because your future is that much bigger and brighter. And it's out in front of you, not back behind you, because we can't go back in the past and hop in a time machine and recreate things, no matter how bad we want to, we can't. So if you know a person that has, let me know, because there's some things in my past I would love to rewrite, <laughs> but it made me who I am, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the refocus part. So refuel, refocus, and realign. Another car analogy here. When you take your vehicle to get an oil change, what do they tell you, ladies? Time what are some of the recommendations? <laughs> yes, to get it aligned, rotate and balance your tires in order for your car to drive straight and your tires not to wear down faster. Because depending what vehicle you have, tires are not cheap. So if we take time, aligning our vehicles, why don't we take time to realign our lives and realign it on a holistic level, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? Are you running on empty because you haven't tapped into all areas of your life? Is something in your life lacking you where you're not in balance and if so, we need to find balance. We need to get back into equilibrium because that is how we are meant to set up. And back in the day, I was so big on chakras and I learned it from a yoga teacher whenever I went to a community college course. And this teacher was phenomenal. She was Indian descent and her and I just grew a bond outside of the teacher-student relationship where she took it upon herself to invite me over to her house. She showed me different things, cooked, cooked certain Indian foods for me. We talked about chakras and et cetera. But that says a lot whenever you go from a student teacher ratio to a friendship. And she's teaching you about different modalities and stuff that you weren't privy about. And chakras, it's not all about the woo-woo, but it helps you find that alignment, you know, and you learn more about yourself. So that whenever I thought about realignment, I thought about the chakras. I thought about how do I realign myself as a person, as, you know, my spiritual beliefs, my religious backgrounds without necessarily having certain things that's driving me away from my first century. Beautiful. So incredible. I love that. And I love all the car analogies. I'm a car fanatic myself. <laughs> so that resonates. I would love a Lamborghini right now, but there's no back seats for a little bundle. Toy. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I want it black on black with some blue neon lights. So when that pulls up, he'll look over and be like, you want to race? And then he was like, wait, that's a woman. And I was like, hell yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that is awesome. It is. Yes. So um, I love that your podcast, that you really focus on featuring real topics and real people and you showcase authenticity and transparency. So why did you choose to take such an unfiltered approach? Um, whew, so I chose to take an unfiltered approach because I have been that unfiltered person. Sometimes people say I'm very direct and blunt. And I say, I don't mean any harm by it. My husband is a big person that when we met, he said, you're hella rude. And I was like, well, you don't have to be with me if you don't want to. I'm not, I'm somebody's cup of tea, but I'm not everybody's cup of tea. And I just feel like coming from a male dominated feel, you have to have thick skin. If not, you're going to get swallowed up or eaten alive, metaphorically speaking. So that's why I took an unfiltered approach. And then I also took an unfiltered approach to let people know I'm a real person just like you are. And whatever you're dealing with, there's probably someone else dealing with that as well. And maybe they may not 
feel comfortable about talking about it, but I'm here to have that laissez-faire approach and, you know, talk about it so you can know that you're not the only one going through this and you're not by yourself. So that's why we need to be unfiltered. And I said, whenever we are in the grocery store or we're at Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, Tim Hortons, or wherever you choose to drink your coffee, we have these live conversations that are, you know, unfiltered. We can't put a filter on it and we can't go back and remind a conversation that we had in person. So why am I trying to do that on a podcast? And yes, I tried it for a little bit where I did have a team of editors, but you're only editing a minute or two. And if my podcast is not making X amount of dollars, I'm spending money over here and not seeing a ROI yet. So I want to return on my investment. So I'm no longer going to edit it. And people like it just the way it is because every episode sounds different. You never know what you're going to get. I built in these fun questions. I have this rapid fire 10 question game or an icebreaker. And I like to do that as a connection part of my segment, Chantel and Gwen, because then it allows the audience to connect a little bit more with the guests that's on my show. And they're like, oh my gosh, I would have never thought about that. And it, it lets people go deep diving with that individual. And you feel like you're part of that conversation too. That's really cool. We'll have to look into that. And as a guest, somebody did that to me, the rapid fire thing. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> um, and it was all like silly stuff, like favorite ice cream, go. And I'm like, uh, I haven't eaten ice cream in 10 years. I don't know. <laughs> um, but no, I love that uh, you had an editing team and you made the intentional choice to no longer edit. Um, I started with a uh, YouTube channel, turn blog, turn book, turn podcast, not turn, but you know, it evolved and then started a podcast. And I knew from my little blip of trying to create little three minute inspirational YouTube videos that editing was not my friend. And I, my perfectionist tendencies make that three minute video take like three weeks to make. Uh, so uh, that was a big reason of why I intentionally was like, these interviews are going to be live in the Facebook group because then it's out there. And so then what would be the point of spending time or money editing something that's already out there live in the world, unfiltered? <laughs> exactly. You can't claw it back. Yeah. Yes. And y'all's graphics are amazing. I'm not a graphics person. So when I saw y'all's graphics, I was like, yes you guys inspired me, you ladies. And I was like, I need to have some bomb graphics. I did have some graphics, but it's just me right now doing it. So it takes a lot of time to put things together as, especially for like the huge number of guests that I have on, on a regular basis. So I was like, I have to outsource this eventually. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> exactly. That would definitely be something with as much content as you're producing to have help. And being a mom as well. <laughs> Just yes. that and graphic design. Yeah. And the baby made a little appearance because I'm not sure if y'all heard her crying. So she's like, hey, I'm here too. <laughs> well, good. Hello. Welcome. What's her name? Mariah. Hi, Mariah. <laughs> Podcast famous. <laughs> exactly. I love it. So on your podcast, I know... Um, or I know at least back in the mastermind days, you were asking for a lot of a lot of ideas for, do you know somebody who sponsors podcasts? Like you were really focused on sponsor sponsorships at some point when we were uh, masterminding regularly together. And so I wanted, I was just curious as to why that was part of your strat strategy and how others could get started if they'd like to do that too, because that's not something we've looked at yet. So the reason why I wanted sponsors for my podcast is because then it would bring in a stream of income where I could take that income and diversify it to outsource certain tasks like um, social media promos. I could outsource editing if I want to, but that's not going to be an option anymore because I don't want to edit my show. I have already tried that and it didn't work for me for various reasons, as I mentioned. I also want to do graphics because I feel like Whenever you are branded by association, people will know your brand by your brand colors, by your graphics and et cetera. And I think it would just kind of solidify the whole Gems podcast brand. I do have some templates from the company that I used to 
do the editing with and they gave me that to use any time but I would want something that's more me that's more vibrant and vibracious and kind of goes around with the whole theme so I may reintroduce those graphics later on or I may just come up with a whole new strategy there and the reason why sponsorships is so important is because then you are branded by association because that sponsor that you're seeking out has some of the same missions and values that you have and you're cross-pollinating different audiences. So I think that's a good way there. And so whenever I got stuck with having some sponsors and just not getting the right ones or pitching and they're like, no, not for me, I started reaching out to companies that I matched their brand and their brand matched me. So mm -hmm. one of my um, sponsors was a friend of mine that's an engineer. We used to work together at this particular Fortune 500 company. She's a Venezuelan. Shout out to Chocolates Dalila. She started a chocolate business. It's straight um, bean to bar. So the products is sourced directly from Venezuela and she has um, different bars and she has diversified the chocolates. I've actually seen her make some of the chocolates and now she has a storefront in Venezuela and she has the products that she sells here locally at different farmers markets. So her and her husband hired me to do the, co the commercial for one of their chocolates. So that's on one of the episodes on my podcast. It's called Chocolates Dalila and the inspiration was her mother and just to give back to some of the people in Venezuela. And then I interviewed her personally because I wanted to have people see that you don't necessarily have to allow a title and a label to define you. Even though she was an engineer and she spent this time in corporate America, she's a mother and she's also a business owner, a small business that she is now growing. So she's multifaceted and multidimensional, such as myself. And then now switching gears here, now that I'm a mother, I started reaching out to different brands that I use now as a mom that I want to show other moms, like whether it's, you know, mom swag, like nursing bras, because whether you're nursing your baby at the breast or you're using a pump and you're using a double electric pump, a manual pump or whatnot, you want to be hands-free. You don't want to be constrained for 30 minutes or however long your pumping session is, because let's be real, household chores are adding up. So I started to just reach out to brands that mat match what I needed as a mom, because there's no handbook, there's no manual to be in a mom. So I was like, I need to make this easier, especially when I'm on the ground running, when my husband is away from the home and it's just me and I don't necessarily have that extra set of hands or et cetera, or if my mom is not here to help me, I need to make it easier for myself. So that's another way I started targeting different brands and bringing them in for sponsorships, whether they're sending me products and I'm reviewing it or et cetera. And I feel like it's something that I'm still learning and growing because as I begin to transition as a person and make that transformation that's going to be a part of how I go out and strategize the brand sponsors no longer am I going to pitch for a brand to turn me down or pitch for like using pod corn or popcorn or I can't remember the site because that brand may not necessarily identify with my mission and the audience that I'm targeting and I have to be okay with that yeah I like that you bring that up. I think that's been a big um, barrier of why I haven't looked at it because kind of the easy, low hanging fruit to get started with that. I'm like, that's not an alignment. Like I'm okay with this being free and paying out of pocket per month of the various things you end up having to host a podcast. But um, yeah, uh, so that's cool that you're taking that approach and you saw the barrier and then you found an aligned way around it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, very smart. You. Very smart. I want to um, touch back on your being a mom. And of course, I want to, Chantal and I want to congratulate you on your new little one. Um, and we also would love to know what other tips you have for busy moms who are building businesses. Okay, this is a <laughs> loaded one because like I tell people, I'm not new to it. I'm true to it because whenever you become a mom, that's a human being that you're responsible for. First, I was on renakid.com, which that's my little joke because I would rent my nieces and nephews and give it give them back. But you can't give your child back. What are you gonna do? Put it back in your stomach? Or like, you know. 
So some of the tips is setting up boundaries, boundaries for your clients and boundaries for yourself. So now I used to, before I had the baby, I would record um, in the morning all the way up to a certain point in the evening. Now my mornings are strictly allocated to my baby. That's where I am bonding with her uninterrupted because she doesn't need to vie for my attention like other people. Other people can wait. She is a priority because she cannot take care of herself. So I am her primary caregiver and I need to make sure that I show her undivided attention. I ha She has my eye contact. I'm not distracted. I play with her. I talk to her. I nurture her so she can know mommy sees you. Mommy hears you. Mommy loves you. And mommy sees you as a vital component of your life. You didn't ask to be here. Mommy brought you here. So I have to make sacrifices in order to give back to her because she is no one else's responsibility but mine. So boundaries is key. The other thing is running a business, knowing what works for you in your business. Are you at a point where you could run your business by yourself or do you need to introduce automation or outsourcing? So automation, one part that I use is job form because whenever I'm working with my podcast guests and clients or visionary cook, they fill out a form. And that's one way where I use that as a repository to go to one central location where I pull that information from. So that's a form of automation versus me just getting a speaker sheet and trying to pull together all that information because that's not a efficient use of my time or my energy. Then outsourcing. What I'm going to look at outsourcing is once certain monetary resources come in and they are coming in, then I'm going to begin to take that pool of money and use that to pay for the things that I need in the business because then that creates the ROI, the return on investment. Money is coming in and money is going out. So it's no longer coming from Genesis fund money or Genesis is money or Genesis husband's money because you know, that could create some rifter, especially if he doesn't have the same vision that I have, you know, and let's be real, you know, that happens in relationships. Sometimes they see one, one, they see something one way and I see it another way, but that doesn't mean their way is wrong. And that doesn't mean my way is wrong. It just means we have different opinions and that's okay. So, so that's the next tip. Another tip is know your why when you're in business, because when you know your why, then it's going to drive you to how you show up, who you're connected with, how you spend your time, and how you also build in the three R's, refuel, refocus, and realign in your business so you don't hit that period of burnout. So those are just some tips I'll leave the audience with there, because there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, those were brilliant. Um, I love how um, a like you are such a responsible parent. It's, you know, it's really um, surprising oftentimes um, when you run into, you know, parents or um, people who have had kids and it's such a, <laughs> it seems like such a willy nilly approach to parenting um, oftentimes um, in our culture, in our society. And you really, I love that you've set boundaries. Boundaries, obviously, we need to set in all areas of our lives, but good for you for really setting that boundary around the time that you spend with your daughter and what you're giving her, how you're nourishing her, not only, you know, from a place of her body, but her spirit, you're truly nurturing her and bringing your total presence. Really beautiful, really beautiful. And one thing that I want to add there too, Gwen, is as a first time parent, I would encourage you to take some parenting classes because you learn more about yourself and what type of parent you are. You are, you learn about your temperament, but you also learn about your baby's temperament because your child's temperament can also feed off of you by your facial expression, by your body language and et cetera. And I'm just going to put this out here because I'm the real deal, y'all. There was a day where she was just crying uncontrollably. I had no idea what was going on. She was fed. She was dry. You know, she wasn't overstimulated. She wasn't understimulated. I cuddled with her a little bit and I wanted to say, shut up. And then I, and I said, and I was doing that and I was like, so, 
And I had to swallow the shut back down so the up won't come out because I was like, I cannot talk to my child this way because I would never want somebody else to feel like they have permission to tell my daughter to shut up, to shut up because I condone that by saying it myself. So I said, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how frustrated you get, think about how you react to your child because your child feeds off of that reaction and that energy. And you don't want your child to disconnect from you versus connecting with you because of how you showed up for them. And motherhood, there's always going to be highs and lows. There's going to be ups and downs, but you just have to kind of take a pause, reassess and reevaluate, and then approach it differently. And when you feel like you can't do that, call a girlfriend that has had some skin in the game and say, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. Can you offer me any advice? Whether you take that advice or you don't, you at least have a sounding board and a trusted individual you go to or reach out to the pediatrician. And I'm not going to be that parent that's like putting a whole bunch of questions because I don't want my pediatrician to get tired of me and like quit the relationship. So now I wait till I have six questions and put all six of the questions in the patient chart so she can answer them together because I'm not the only parent. And you never know what that pediatrician is dealing with. And I think that's an important part that I use as a mother, which also factors into my business because it allows me to be full and show up for myself authentically, but also to show up for the baby as well. Hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Incredible advice. Just incredible. So many good tips there. I love that in mothering, in your business, in your podcast, in every area of your life, you're really looking at how to be efficient with your time. And you talked about automations and systems, and even, you know, with the pediatrician example of not one question every other day, because that's not effective use of your time or their time. And again, back to that respecting of other people's time. Um, so you, uh, you know, you're following the golden rule. You're respecting other people's time because you want them to respect your time and in honor of time <laughs> and respecting your time this evening, because I know we did have some tech difficulties. So we are running a little late. Uh, so I just am really curious if you had to do it all over again, what might you do differently and what would you keep exactly the same? So differently, I would have started a lot sooner and bet on myself quicker mm -hmm. because we all know time is of the essence and tomorrow is no guarantee, but we pray and hope to see another day. And what I would remain the same is my personality because it's my personality that's a wild card factor that sets me apart in the sea of competitors because there's only one me and I need to be me. And that's why my fingerprints are uniquely created for me because there's no other person that has my same fingerprints or DNA. And whenever somebody looks looks at me, they're like, oh, that's Genesis of Mars 10. No, that's not a carbon copy. That's the original. Hmm. Beautiful. So cool. Um, Genesis, in our Create a Life You Love membership, we've actually been highlighting the importance of having a personal success ritual, which is essentially just a highly curated set of micro habits that work for you. So we'd love to highlight maybe some of the things that you do. What are some of your micro habits or routines or rituals that help you stay RRR? <laughs> and um, do all of the things you do and do them so well? So definitely a nice, hot, steamy shower in the morning to just get me pumped up and listening to something self-development, whether I'm listening to a sermon or while I was listening to the OI Mastermind um, in Kajabi and while in the shower, because that's the way I can fit it in with my busy schedule. Then some of the other things is working out, whether I'm actually doing a Zumba class, which I haven't been since having the baby, but I can, I can work out in my home, just putting on some YouTube videos and using my free weights here, my yoga ball, or just using um, body, body weight to strengthen condition and tone myself up because I definitely want to get, you know, feel good. And when you feel good, you look good. When you look good, you feel good. Another thing is listening to music. Music therapy is key. Whether I'm listening to CHH, Christian hip hop, gospel, rock, um, 
let's see, pop music or whatever, because I really believe in listening intentionally to the lyrics and not just the beat. Whereas first I was just that beat girl, but now I'm that lyrics girl because I need to make sure that it's nourishing my soul and my body and I'm not allowing junk in because when you allow junk in, you start to manifest that junk and I'm not about to do that. So that's another tip. Another ritual is definitely prayer. Spending time talking to God and allowing God to talk back to me, whether it's that gut instinct, whether that it's that intuition, that still small voice or or et cetera, because that is tapping into my spirituality as well as, you know, the religion. Because if I spend so much time tapping into others, how am I tapping into my creator? So I want to have that vertical relationship. And once that vertical relationship is there, the horizontal relationships in my life will line up accordingly. And then let's see, oh, DND, do not disturb. That's a routine. So at a certain point, every day, my phone goes on, do not disturb. So that means I'm setting up boundaries. I'm not going to be accepting any phone calls, any text messages, or whatever the case may be. If you don't get me during that time, it's because it's time for me to wind down and wind up myself so I could be optimal. So and um, journaling, journaling was a was another big component. So whether I'm just typing a note in my phone and electronically journaling, whether I'm doing audio journaling, which is what I like to call my solo episodes on my podcast, where I just had a aha moment and I just talk into the mic and go and whatever's out there, I put it out there. Or if I'm just spending time just writing it down in my journal, in that quiet space, whenever maybe my husband's with the baby or et cetera. And I just have some me time. So me time is the time that is going to allow me to be whole and complete because if I'm not whole and complete, I'm not going to be a good wife. I'm not going to be a good mother, a daughter, a aunt, and all the other labels that I carry. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You have to fill your own cup first before you can fill everyone else's. Really good stuff. Yeah. So good. So I know everyone's just been um, soaking up all your amazing knowledge. Where can they connect with you, listen to gyms, all the things? So you can head on over to my website, which is genesisamarscamp.net. So it's my full name, .net. And you'll see the backlinks to the various social media channels that I'm on. And I also have two freebies. So one is the first chapter of my book, which is under the book tab. So you'll get that. And then I also have a features and merchandise tab, which shows where I've been, where I've been seen at, da, da, da. And there's also another freebie there. So just go grab those freebies because I believe that we all have gifts and who doesn't like to receive gifts? Gifts make you warm and fuzzy. So why not check something out? And for those of you that are interested in learning more about GEMS, it's available on all major audio platforms. And you could also see the videos on YouTube. So it's on 40 plus platforms right now, audio. So, yep. And that's also on the website as well. There's different tabs there. And shout out to the Hello LLC for making me this briefcase. Awesome. Nice. Um, We'll get those links in the show notes. So everyone go reach out to Genesis, get uh, the free gifts on there. I think one's the first chapter of her book and then um, the other free gift, the surprise that she mentioned on there. So go check that out. Definitely. And we'd love to know what your takeaways were from today's episode, what value you received, if you could please share it with someone that you think would benefit as well, anyone who's interested in parenting, podcasting, book writing, um, there are so many great nuggets, so many great gems from this episode. So by all means, share it and also leave a podcast review at ratethispodcast.com forward slash Kalil. That's C-A-L-Y-L. That's always appreciated. You can quickly and easily leave that review from your mobile device and by grabbing the link in the show notes.
Yes. And so a quick little look ahead. We are so super excited to announce that the Create a Life You Love membership is going to be offering a 21-day human design authority challenge starting in November. I know Gwen's super excited and this is totally her jam. <laughs> um, she has been offering this incredible masterclass series for the past few months. And one of our members did this challenge, this very one that we're going to offer. And she was in our membership just raving about the clarity and the results that she got from these 21 days of journaling. So that spurred excitement in the other members and in myself. And then Gwen said she was going to redo it in November. So we decided let's do it together. Let's structure it. Let's offer increased support and accountability. And then we decided why not open it up to the public? So the challenge is open to members and non-members and it's free. And for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, your authority in human design is how you make aligned decisions. So, you know, we're all about alignment and doing what feels right to you, your unique unleashed vision. So making correct and aligned decisions is essential to your success. It leads to better results. And this is all about learning to connect to and trust your inner compass. This challenge is officially going to kick off on November 7th, but early registration is already open and we'll get the link in your show notes. And then if you are, if this is kind of sounding interesting, you are definitely going to want to tune in next week's podcast episode because it's just Gwen and I, and we are going deep into aligned decision-making using your authority to help you get all geared up and ready for the official start date of the challenge on November 7th. I know that's right. I'm, I am so uber excited about this. Um, obviously, as a human design specialist, it's so near and dear to me. And frankly, when I learned um, to tune in and trust and connect with my own authority, my life was transformed. Um, and I've heard so many of my clients say the same things. I've seen it time and time again simple changes, simple attunement to authority, and all of a sudden a life is transformed. So it really is a don't miss. Um, so once again, you can find us live every week in the Create a Life You Love community or catch all of our episodes along with Genesis Podcast Gym wherever you listen to or watch your podcast. So be sure to tune in to us at the Create a Life You Love community in the free Facebook group. And um, like I mentioned before, we won't have a guest next week. And we are so, so very thankful, Genesis, for your time this evening and the amazing value you brought. Oh Just absolutely blown away, as I knew we would be. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and so we will be live next Tuesday, same time, same place, no tech issues, I'm putting it out there. It's, we're going to, it's just going to be perfect, perfectly seamless in every way. So we'll see you there. Bye. Enjoy the journey. Thank you for listening to the Create a Life You Love podcast. We would love to hear from you about your biggest takeaways. Share them with us on Facebook or Instagram at Create a Life You Love Coaching. If you love this episode, be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It's very much appreciated. If you are ready to build aligned and sustainable momentum without overwhelm and burnout, we invite you to apply for the Create a Life You Love membership on our website, createalifeyoulovecoaching.com forward slash membership. That's it for now. Enjoy the journey.